Hey, hey, hey. So many, many people are asking. All right, a few people are asking. Okay, nobody asked, but I felt the need to explain. The reason you're seeing two different scenarios, it looks like I'm one place, then I'm another. And the reason is simple, I am. I have the videos which show the capture machine, which is a Windows 7 based machine, but it's, it's basically a race car of, of, a, of a computer. And that's the one that I took to the barn and captured all those tracks with right to the hard drives, to SSD hard drives. And uh, that worked absolutely wonderful, as you saw in the video. And then I exported those tracks from Capture, which is what you're supposed to do, onto the portable USD drive, USB drive, as you saw in the video. And then brought it here to my wonderful home studio where, you know, Penny can be relaxed and uh, it's a little messy right now. And I can sit here and edit stuff. I'm doing video right now. I'm exporting a, a video to YouTube. But I just thought I would explain that, that. That's kind of my process. I have the luxury of one machine designed for capturing. And this machine sits at home. When I say this machine, I mean this machine. My big Mac. That is like a serious, serious computer. And I don't like to lug it around. So it stays here. And I've made a few upgrades. I, uh, I use Presonus software. And that was a Presonus mixer you saw that captured with Presonus Capture all the audio from the barn. So I like to stick with brand uniformity because it usually works way better all together with software drivers and updates. So I have added the Presonus Studio 2-4, which allows me to use um, ultra high quality USB audio to listen to what I'm doing on my little mini Mac, mini Mackey monitors or on my custom ear molds for headphones. I don't use headphones because I don't like the occlusion effect. Look it up, occlusion effect. Not occult, occlusion effect. So, and in addition, I have the Presonus fader port, which has a motorized moving fader and allows me to, uh, one channel at a time, move around very quickly, more quickly than you would imagine, and adjust the mix as it were. So when you put that all together, and oh did I mention I have a three terabyte ultra fast Firewire 800 drive here loaded up with all kinds of media and about uh, I don't know 65,000 pieces of music and, and sound effects and stuff that I can draw upon should I need it. And all together it is the current vision of current vision and version of my little home mixing studio. There's no actual recording in here, no musicians. There's absolutely no room in here for musicians and uh, I wouldn't actually allow them in here. I'm kidding you guys, I'm kidding. So there it all is. So the Studio Live AR22 analog slash digital mixer is arrived, it's been plugged in and is currently under load testing all 16 or 22 tracks or whatever it says there are recording and i've beefed up the computer with yet another ssd drive for a total of 1.3 terabytes astounding double the ram and everything seems to be working fine. Although I gotta say, in order to use Capture and the uh, software, and oh, actually Universal Control, I had to go through a whole bunch of Windows dancing updates, but that's because I'm Windows 7. So once I get through all that mishmash, everything linked up and I just need to learn how to use it, which I plan to be using it this weekend at the Slide Guitar Show. I hope you got your ticket because that's the ticket. So I'm gonna let that run. It says I've got 4.01 days of recording time with my 1.3 terabytes of all SSD drives. So I think, you know, that's a cool little rig, a little bit of a pain to move around. Better, you know, laptops easier, but this seems to me to be more robust. A little noisier, it'll go on the floor, of course. So 
All right, Studio Live AR22 USB. You just keep on recording there, and I'm just gonna let you go for a while. Hey, hey, what a great show last night. And I have brought the computer home. I recorded all those wonderful juicy tracks, as Daniel would say, to SSD hard drive. And that went pretty flawlessly. And as promised by the new software, it is now exporting all those tracks. And it's going to take a bit of time, as you can see, because I'm just popping it onto this 2 terabyte USB drive. So that takes a while. If I was bouncing it to there, it would be pretty quick. So, I'm just going to let that go. I'm going to go unpack all the cables. Oh, there you go. Channel 2, snare. 23 minutes just for that one track. Oh, no, for all the tracks. Right. Top window, exporting, time remaining in total, 22 minutes. And the window on the bottom shows which track. Channel 2, currently. The snare, 40, 39 seconds for that. You get the idea. So, after that one goes, the, it'll move down the line. And do all of them. Do the list. And... Then I'll take them home on that drive and open them up on the home studio. And uh, yes, luxury. This is the capture machine, which we bring to the gig. And then we export the tracks and open it up in the luxury of my home studio where I can do sound in my underwear and not worry about anybody seeing me. That's where the real magic happens. So I'll leave you with that visual. And uh, once again, we'll let this thing do its thing. Song called Charlie, and it is actually uh, based on a real person. I would cut something off. If you knew where I was doing it. My hair. <laughs>
Charlie. He was a guitar picking man. 